Many creators pursue the goal of going full time with their content, but not everyone makes it. Some gather other commitments in their life, like their job, their family, and are unable to continue their creativity. And others realize that being a content creator isn't as fun as they hoped it would be. In these scenarios, it's really easy to feel discouraged and defeated, like you might be giving up on a dream you've had for a decade or longer. However, the time you spend working on your content isn't a waste. You can always bring your skills with you. Really quick, I also have an article for the same topic. Go through at your own pace at andycormier.blog. Many people underestimate their ability to apply the creator side of their life to their professional side. My content got me my first job out of college. That job was at Aver Media, the title of which was Marketing Specialist. However, the specifics of that job were more like Social Media Manager, Influencer Relations Manager, and Community Manager, all sort of jumbled up into one ball of stress. <laughs> Circling back to getting that job, of course, I have a degree in marketing, that's what I majored in in college. So otherwise, I wouldn't have been looking for this type of work. I'll preface it with that. But at the time, Avery Media had really robust operations related to creator marketing and things like that, like streamers, Twitch, etc. in North America, specifically in California. Anybody can have a degree in marketing and apply for a job like that. But I've been making videos, creating content online in some way, shape, or form since 2014. Don't go looking before the year of 2020. Pretty much everything that I've posted before 2020 is privated because it's low quality Let's Plays and I don't want the world to see that. Don't go looking. But I started building my current style of content back in 2020. So because at that time I'd been making content really consistently, including streaming, side note, streamers were the main target market for the company's products for this particular role at that time. The fact that I made content already put me at a much more favorable position compared to other people who could have been applying for the job, still meeting the exact same requirements of having a degree in marketing. So I did get the job. And yes, I did meet all the technical requirements, stuff like having having a degree in marketing or equivalent experience, things like that. The fact that I had the skill and mindset of being a creator is what pushed me over the edge to actually get the job. And this was confirmed by people who I talked to later on. And through the application process, I wasn't like super flaunting my creator side. Like I mentioned, I had a YouTube channel. I sent a link when they requested it, stuff like that. Since getting that job, I've realized it is a major strength to be able to have a body of work to point to through your job search and things like that. Creating content gives you many, many skills relevant to getting jobs. Thanks to the skills that I've developed, I've been making it far with interviews with other companies and I even got an offer. That offer was rescinded because I barely tried negotiating for a little bit higher salary because I live in a very expensive area. But I even said, I understand if my request isn't possible. So like, but they still re rejected me under the grounds of I negotiated. That was a crazy disappointing time. But back to the video, back to applying your skills from your creativity to your career. Start by listing out pretty much every relevant professional skill you might have developed from being a content creator. You'll surprise yourself by how many relevant skills you've developed. Depending on your niche, the skills you really chose to own and develop, and your level of organization and treating your content like a business, you could have a pretty exhaustive list of skills to place on your resume. And you're likely at least good enough at these skills to use them in a professional setting. We're going back to the blog post to look at this list for me, but here's just like some of the skills I've developed from being a creator that I can directly apply to work. I learned a lot about photography from learning the ins and outs of my camera and getting pretty good at taking photos as a result. Like I have two camera set up, I have fancy lenses. While I'm not on full frame yet, I'm really, really crafty with my APS-C cameras from Sony. I've also developed videography from shooting my videos and vlogs, gotten better online broadcast production from streaming using OBS, and mastering relevant technology like capture cards, cameras, things like that. I'm recording this video in OBS with a capture card plugged into my cameras. Speaking of which, open broadcaster software. That's a professional skill, like for streaming as well as recording my videos for a quicker workflow. I I'm using a quicker workflow right now by recording in OBS instead of using my cameras. I'm also a power user with Notion, and that's really useful for the content, plus working on like managing my projects and my tasks. My life is so much more organized ever since I got good at using Notion. Thanks, Thomas Frank. <laughs> Through all this, I've also developed a lot of skills in the Adobe Creative Cloud. The things I use most are Adobe Premiere Pro for video editing, Photoshop for photo editing, and Lightroom for touching up my photography. Through using Notion and other tools, I've gotten pretty good at project management, at least for myself. This is from planning out my videos, setting up task management, using Google Calendar, things like that all just like self-management for the projects that I'm working on. 
I've also improved my copywriting skill from my blog posts and learning how to structure my ideas in more engaging ways. And I've also developed a bunch of skills directly related to my career in uh, marketing, social media, influence relations, things like that. So like social media management and marketing from curating and managing my social presence as a creator, as well as relevant scheduling and analytical tools community management from building my community through my content, marketing strategy for developing and executing long-term strategy with my content, market research for research and planning my content and using analytics, content marketing because content marketing is basically just content, but for a job, content for brand deals especially fits there. I've improved my skills related to influencer relations because I mean, that's what I do for work, but that's what I make content about now. Honestly, I've gotten so much better at problem solving because as a creator, it's not like you have a manager to help you through things. You have to figure everything out yourself. If you if you asked me two years ago to explain the settings of my camera, I could not do it. If you asked me two years ago, like how to use capture cards and cameras in conjunction for like better OBS, I couldn't do it. I figured out so much just because I've needed to or wanted to while making content. And while this list seems pretty exhaustive, this is not exhaustive list. This is just the first things that came to my mind. Your list will probably look different, but this is just like some inspiration to help you get started with writing your own list down with your own skills. You probably have many more transferable skills from your content creation than you think get creative and start writing them down. It is important to note that the scope of work and exact activities you might be doing, if like, let's say you do social media management for your content versus doing that for a company, the scope will look different and the tools you use will probably be different, but you're learning the fundamentals whether or not it's in content or in your career. Even if you're like a three or four out of 10 with these skills, you're way past the point of dipping your toes in most of them. Like you can actually use these skills in a professional setting. You might need a bit of guidance to like improve those skills and use the specific tools, learn like what the company exactly wants. But the point is you have far more skills than you think you do. You don't need to be an expert in a skill to put it on your resume or to use it on the job. Just like you don't need to be as fluent as a native speaker to get by with a language. In fact, the necessity to improve these skills on the job is the fastest way to get better at them. Just like if you're someone who's getting by with a language, the fastest way to get better is to be thrown into the country where they speak that language. That's how I got really good at Japanese. I got pretty good, good enough to understand and get by, and then I lived there for two months. Now, if relevant, see what skills you've listed for your content already overlap with skills you use in your career. These can fortify each other. You're finding overlaps and building bridges between the skills that you thought were separate, but are actually really, really tied together. By building that bridge between your creative side and your career side, you might realize you have more years of experience and a deeper breadth of knowledge than you thought you did. For example, anything related to social media, influencer relations, and marketing applies both to my content and to my career, and doing one helps fortify the other. Thus, even if I only have like two or three years of work experience post-college, whether or not you include internships, some of my skills may be at an even higher level than that because I've used them on the job and through my content. Especially given how much I intentionally overlap my content subject matter with that of my career. Treat your content as a public portfolio. Obviously, there are some exceptions to this rule, like if you're an anonymous shit poster who makes memes all the time, rather than more like educational content. Or if you want to be someone who like actively, candidly talks about your job and potentially criticizes it. But in general, it is a wasted opportunity to not showcase your content in your career side of your life. It shows that you're the type of person to passionately build something even if you're not necessarily getting paid to do so. This goes even more so if the content you make is relevant to your line of work. You're showing future employers that you're passionate about what you do. Though, do be careful not to let your passion be exploited. This is the case in many gaming and entertainment roles. They'll work you to the bone because they know you're passionate about something. But those red flag areas aside, employers would generally rather have somebody who's passionate about their work and showcases it publicly than someone who's like, I have a resume, bro, trust me. Like, in the interview process, if companies are screening you, like, to make sure that you're who you say you are, if you have this public portfolio of content, not only does it make it really easy for them to know who you are and what you're interested in, it also lets your skills speak for themselves. Like, if you write blogs, make videos, or otherwise do something to share your passion or interest in your, in your field or whatever, that is your public resume. Companies will have a much easier time trusting an outspoken creator who talks about the ins and outs of their industry and gives educational materials or whatever for that type of work, much more than someone who just says they know these things on a resume. 
they can see your skills in action through your content before you're even interviewed. For most creators, I would urge you to put your channel on your resume. Why stop with simply putting your creative skills on your resume? Go all the way and include it as work experience. It is work. You're doing something that takes a lot of skill and effort and passion and creativity. Of course, whether or not mentioning that you're a creator is that'll depend on what type of job you're looking for, how public you want to be, and whether your channel and skill set are relevant. But in my field of marketing, there is next to no reason not to include that I make content about marketing and empowering creators on my resume. If your content is relevant to your field, it helps to distinguish you as a thought leader. It showcases your portfolio of work and places your passion front and center. And most importantly, you develop numerous marketable skills that apply to and transfer to almost any field. Creativity, problem solving, project management, that will apply to almost any job that you have. And then at the more nitty gritty tool sides of things like using your camera, editing videos, stuff like that, that also applies to a ton of jobs. Whether you end up quitting making content because you're too busy with work and life, or you continue to make content while you maintain a full-time job, the skills you gain from being a creator are worthwhile and absolutely applicable to your career. And in many cases, your content can serve as a public portfolio that makes you even more marketable to employers. Embrace the hard work you've done to make your content and develop the skills to do so. And embrace your creative side when applying those skills to your career. If you're looking to improve your skills as a creator and treat it more like a business, I highly recommend you watch my video called Build a Content Temple. It's all about how you can intentionally start planning your content pieces to fit together to make a more cohesive body of work, which is better for you in the long run as a creator hoping to make it your career. Leave a like, subscribe for more, and click here to watch that video. Best of luck and happy creating.